feel like body care doesn't get very reviewed, but man, do I have some strong opinions on this stuff. Ugh, it was nasty. And now I'm stuck with a rash. Yeah, I don't recommend this at all. Hey my loves, welcome back. If you're new, I'm Cam. And if you're a fellow beauty lover, then I really hope that you stick around and join the Cam fam by hitting that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you don't miss any videos. Well, I'm ready to start. I'm talking some trash today, spilling the tea because it's another empties video. And I wanted to do this empties video before I forget what I actually thought about all these products. <laughs> so I've got a whole bunch of empties on my desk that I've been using since like the beginning of the year. This is all the like wintertime, springtime stuff. I can't wait to dish about them and spill the dirt for you guys. And I'm actually really excited because I have a lot of head to head battles here between products in the same category. So I'm gonna let you guys know which one I preferred and which one was junk. And also, also, I'm really excited about this video because I'm gonna be doing my 3000 subscriber giveaway, which is insane. I just did like a two and a half thousand subscriber giveaway. So thank you guys so much and make sure that you stay tuned till the end of the video to find out how to enter the giveaway. I'm gonna tell you guys all the details and let's just jump into it. What I think I'm gonna do is categorize everything by like hair care first, then some makeup, then skincare, cause I've got a whole lot of skincare and body care here. And that's cause I only wash my hair like a couple times a week and I only do my makeup like a couple times a week, but I wash my face twice a day. So I go through a whole lot of skincare and some of it's like pricey, some of it's not. So I'm gonna let you know what's worth the money and what isn't. But let's begin with hair care. I do a lot of hair care videos on my channel. I'm like hair care obsessed. And I actually think I'm gonna do a whole standalone review of this first product because I see a lot of bad reviews about it sometimes. And it's one of my favorite products. And I think it's just very misunderstood. It might be a little weird to use because of the texture. But the product that I'm talking about is the Kerastase Creme Magistrale. So what this is is kind of like a leave-in conditioner. It's, again, it's so difficult to describe like what this is and what this does. It's for moisturizing your hair very deeply. And I bought a travel size because I was very unsure about this. Again, because the reviews were just so mixed with a lot of people being like, this was weird, I didn't like it, and some people swearing by it. So yeah, I got the little travel size. And as to whether or not I like this product, I went ahead and bought the full size. I think I'm gonna do a full review on it though because I wanna show you guys how I use it and all the different ways that you can use it because it's one of my favorite products now. And I mean, it's Kerastase, like, enough said. Next up, I've got this Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo. I actually don't use a lot of dry shampoo. I used to use a whole bunch back in the day, but for whatever reason, I just started not liking the way that dry shampoo made my hair feel. And a lot of them, like, feel like I'm putting compound dust or baby powder in my hair. They severely dry it out and they just leave like a bunch of white chalky mess on your hair, which if you're blonde like me might not be the worst thing, but if you're a brunette, then you know like the whole white dry shampoo thing. So this Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo actually was really nice. It doesn't feel like it's like super drying your hair out, but it did make my hair feel pretty clean without it being kind of like stiff and weird and dried out. And if unlike me, you actually do use dry shampoo a whole bunch, then I think this is a really good one as opposed to just all those white chalky options out there. Well, that was short and sweet. Let's move on to makeup now. The first product is this Makeup Revolution Extra Hold Makeup Fixing Spray. I actually use setting spray every time I do my makeup because I feel like it really does help you look less powdery and more hydrated and I actually do feel like they make a difference with helping makeup last. Now the reason why I'm not so hot about repurchasing this is because it's a very kind of like chunky spray that comes out of it. I think setting sprays are starting to really gear more towards like being a very fine mist, something like almost aerosol. With something like this, which just kind of sprays out haphazardly and you're almost gambling with whether it's gonna spray your face evenly or whether you're gonna end up with like splatters on your face and then your makeup's ruined. So even though I feel like this did a good job of actually helping my makeup last throughout the day, 
I don't like it when there's just like a big wet spot on my face. So I think in the future, I'm gonna try out probably like the Morphe setting spray because I've seen that it's a very fine mist. And I'm also really curious about the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. For now, this is not a repurchase. And I just think that like these traditional sprayers just are no good for setting your face. Also in the category of makeup, I've got this By Terry Balm de Rose lip balm that I got in a Look Fantastic box. And I love this lip balm. That's why like I really liked the look that's why I really liked the Look Fantastic boxes because they just had such high quality products. All the brands they featured in that box were just really like luxe, high quality brands. And this is like one of the most expensive lip balms that you could buy. And it's so nice. Like it's not sticky, it's velvety smooth. It makes your lips feel really hydrated. And it's got the most amazing rose scent. I'm obsessed with like all things rose scented. So I love this lip balm. I'm so sad that it's empty now. And it's so bougie that it's like, I don't even know when I'm gonna be able to repurchase this. Would I repurchase this? Absolutely. Am I going to? My wallet would hate me. <laughs> Regarding what I'm about to say next, please take my opinion with a grain of salt because I don't normally like to review these like little single use packets. I always wanna make sure I at least have like a travel size of something that I've been able to use for at least a week to really develop an opinion on. But I did get two uses out of this packet and I just wanna include it because it's such an expensive foundation. It's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I just got the sample from Sephora in like my haul order. Originally, I really didn't wanna include this in the video because two uses is just not enough time to see whether you like a product or not. But considering it's Giorgio Armani, it's super expensive and everyone raves about this foundation. I just really wanted to throw my two cents in for you guys. So I'm wearing it right now and I wore it a couple days ago to dinner. I feel like this is very strongly scented to where I'm not normally bothered by scents and I really didn't enjoy this. It felt very drying, very difficult to like apply. It didn't want to stick to my skin. And maybe it's just because it's in this like little plastic packaging, but I feel like this is very overhyped. Granted from a distance, it makes my skin look okay actually, but up close, I feel like it's emphasizing fine lines that I didn't even think I had. Honestly, trying this little sample made me not want to buy the foundation where I was actually eyeing buying this because everyone raves about it. Again, take this with a grain of salt because I only got two uses out of it. It's not its traditional packaging by any means, but for what it's worth, it might be overhyped. Okay, let's get to all the skincare here. I don't even know where to begin. Oh my gosh, I'm just looking at so much skincare. You know what? I think I'm gonna start with body care because that's not something I feel like I normally talk about and I feel like body care doesn't get very reviewed, but man, do I have some strong opinions on this stuff. We're starting with our first head-to-head -head competition and the category is body scrubs. I've got the Tree Hut Shea Sugar Scrub. This was in the scent Island Bliss. And I really, really love the Tree Hut body scrubs. Their scents are amazing, just like absolutely insane. I have the Moroccan Rose right now because it's very like rosy, springtimey. Again, I love rose scents. You guys know. And before that, I was using the Island Bliss one, which they're saying is like coconut scented, but this didn't really smell like coconut. It just smelled like summer, but not in the sort of like coconut sunscreen kind of way. It was actually really, really nice. And this is going head to head with this Frank Body Coconut Coffee Scrub. Apparently Sephora carried the Frank Body products and now they don't anymore because I was trying to find the price and I couldn't find this on Sephora's website anymore. But I'm pretty sure this is more than twice the price of the Tree Hut Scrubs. First of all, if you drink coffee, if you actually brew it from like coffee grounds on like an espresso or something like that, then you already have this product. So why buy it? This is literally just like coffee grounds with some coconut oil. You could totally make it at home for like a fraction of the price, especially if you have coffee grounds that you're gonna throw away anyway. You could use them as a body scrub, but I don't recommend it. The thing about this tree head scrub is that when I actually use it, 
it sticks to my skin and it doesn't go all over the place. It doesn't end up covering like half of my bathtub and half the walls and half a shower curtain. It stays on my legs and then I can rinse it off. If you want coffee in your nether regions, then get this scrub. I would literally get out of the shower after using this and find coffee grinds like just all over me that I thought I'd rinsed off. This was a mess in the shower to use and I'm pretty sure coffee grounds clog your drain, which is why I don't ever use coffee grounds as a scrub to begin with. So just all around fail on this. Ugh, it was nasty. And needless to say, I'm gonna be sticking to the tree hut scrubs. I love them, they're so cheap at 10 bucks each and they do the job amazingly. Now I wanna talk about deodorant because if you're like me and you've gone aluminum free because of all the health risks that people are talking about, I don't really know whether any of that's true, but I just don't wanna take my chances, which is why I've stopped using anything that's an antiperspirant with aluminum and only started using deodorants. This was a really good one that I picked up at Ulta. It's the La Vanilla Sport Lux Healthy Deodorant. So it's aluminum free, but I actually feel like this did a really good job at helping me like not sweat. So I really liked it, but I also wanted to try more deodorants because it was the first one that I've ever bought that was aluminum free. And so I went to Whole Foods recently and I picked up this Hello deodorant with activated charcoal. And I thought this was such a genius idea. I was like, duh, activated charcoal. It's gonna absorb the moisture. It's gonna stop the stink. Why didn't I think of that? Oh no, this is a bad idea. Do not do this. Unless you want dark gray streaks on all of your clothing, and I mean like everywhere on your clothing, don't do a charcoal deodorant. Unless you like having all of your clothes stained. This actually isn't even like empty yet. As you can see, it's dark gray. Unlike this one, which I can't even get any more out of this. That's how bad of an idea this was, but I feel so bad throwing out things that aren't empty that I've been kind of just trying to use this when I'm sitting at home and not about to leave the house and literally all my house clothes are now stained gray because of this deodorant. So just if you ever come across an activated charcoal deodorant, I know it sounds like a good idea in theory, it's not. <laughs> kind of like the coffee scrub. I've also got a whole bunch of hand creams sitting in front of me, and I already did a whole video all about the best hand creams that I found, and I'm gonna link it for you up here, so if you're suffering from dry hands, eczema, anything like that, check out that video, because there's really some like never talked about hand creams in that video that's really gonna save your hands, and I actually mentioned some of these products in that video. I've got a bunch of the First Aid Ultra Repair Creams, in like the regular scent, which is really unscented, in a couple of scents. And this is a really, really light cream. You can actually just use it on your entire body. I think you can even use these on your face, but don't quote me on that. I was using these as a hand cream and they just weren't moisturizing enough for my hands. They're really good if you suffer from slightly dry hands, but Personally, I had to use something more heavy duty, so I started using these on my legs, especially because I started getting really bad razor burn, and these actually helped a lot with soothing the itch, making my legs just feel really nice, moisturized, but not too greasy to where like it would get on my clothes or anything. So I highly recommend the First Aid Ultra Repair Creams just for any issue you have. Again, I don't know whether you can use these on your face, because I personally haven't, but for hands, for body, they're just a really nice lightweight moisturizer that is also gonna help you if you're experiencing any sort of itchiness or discomfort. And way back when I first started getting issues with my hands and I basically bought every single hand cream known to man, I picked up this Gold Bond Eczema Relief Hand Cream at CVS and this was just a greasy mess. It sat on my hands, felt like it never like sunk into my hands and ultimately, again, I started using this on my legs to really soothe the itch, which it did because it has 2% colloidal oatmeal. But again, even on my legs, it just never felt like it fully sank in. It was kind of greasy feeling. So I don't really recommend because it didn't feel like it ultimately moisturized my skin. It just kind of sat on top of it. And then, 
not to rag on Bath and Body Works, but I really only go in there anymore to smell their candles. I don't buy any body care there anymore, any fragrances or anything like that, because it all just kind of smells and feels like plastic to me, or maybe rubber, actually. Again, I had this Bath and Body Works nourishing hand cream, supposedly, and it does have a very nice synthetic vanilla fragrance, and it didn't do anything for my hands, so again, I relegated it to the leg moisturizer section. And a couple days after I started using this, my legs broke out into the worst rash that I've ever had on them. It's been over a week now, and I still have a rash on my legs, which I don't even know what I'm gonna do about. I realized one of the ingredients in this is carbomer. Now, I'm allergic to carbomix, which is basically the group of ingredients that is actually a part of making rubber, and carbomer is part of carbomix. I don't know why they put rubber ingredients in a hand cream. It doesn't do anything to help you, and it's like a known allergen. This is so full of just like, awful synthetic ingredients. Like I don't recommend anything from Bath and Body Works to actually put on your body because as far as I'm concerned, it's all synthetic crap. Again, this is a product that's not even really empty, but it's just so bad that I couldn't wait to finish it and I ended up throwing it in the trash. And just as a side note, if you do have eczema or any sort of skin issues like I do, go to your dermatologist and do a skin allergy test because for all you know, you could be allergic to nickel, so you might be allergic to your jewelry. You could be allergic to rubber, which I am, and I had no idea. And you really need to know your ingredients for this reason, because had I looked at the ingredients, I would have realized that I'm allergic to this. And now I'm stuck with a rash on my legs that I can't get rid of, just because I didn't look at the ingredients first. We've got another battle, and this time it's a battle of the hyaluronic acid serums. The first one is this Farsali Quench Serum, and it says it's a moisture replenishing serum. It's got hyaluronic complex and pro-vitamin B5. Farsali products for me are really hit and miss, and this one was a miss. I feel like, first of all, it did that weird thing that some serums do where they kind of end up lathering on your face, and I don't know why they do that. I used to think it's from like applying too much, so I tried applying a very small amount of this, and it would still kind of like lather, and it also felt like it sat on my skin, didn't sink in, and didn't really moisturize it. So I used it up because it wasn't like so terrible, but it also just didn't really feel like it was doing anything. And yeah, I don't recommend this at all. Now on the flip side, I had this sample from SkinCeuticals. This is their HA intensifier. So the HA is for the hyaluronic acid. And this is actually not the first time I've gotten a sample of this. I've placed a lot of orders on Derm Store and they always send me like SkinCeutical samples. So I've tried this multiple times and it's so expensive that I haven't bought a full size bottle of this, but it is really worth the price. It feels like it sinks in. It feels like it just makes all your fine lines disappear. And I mean, SkinCeuticals is like a med spa brand. So you know their products are effective. They're used by dermatologists like in clinics and SkinCeuticals products are really worth the price. I don't feel like a hyaluronic acid serum is an absolute necessity for me. Otherwise, I would be repurchasing this for sure. This next product I actually got not too long ago in my, I believe, Black Friday Sephora haul. And it's the Inky List CoQ10 Serum. This was my first time trying something from this brand. I haven't really heard of them before, but it looks like they came out kind of as a competitor to The Ordinary. First of all, this packaging. Whoever came up with this packaging needs to be fired and never design packaging for beauty products ever again because there's nothing beautiful or classy or nice feeling about this packaging. At least with The Ordinary, most everything comes in like a glass bottle or just some really nice generic looking packaging. And this just looks like, I don't know, something really bad from the 80s that you use for like arts and crafts, not skincare. As far as the actual serum itself goes, I really liked it. Now, 
A CoQ10 serum is an antioxidant serum, so you can use this, for example, if your skin is a little too sensitive for vitamin C, which mine is, sometimes vitamin C serums will burn my skin a little bit, but this is a great antioxidant alternative, and it actually helps soothe redness and sensitivity, which if you have rosacea like me, you definitely need. Now, it was a little thicker than an actual serum is. I wouldn't really call this a serum, it was more like a light gel lotion texture, so it's a little too thick for me to be using during the summertime, and I really liked it and would repurchase it, but I can't get over the packaging, not only because it's just butt ugly, but uh, <laughs> it is, I'm sorry, but also because I just sucked at dispensing product. It's like, what you, it just spilled too as I opened that. It's got one of these caps and you just have to like squirt it onto your hand, and so it's really hard to control how much of the product comes out. And then every time I would close the cap, it's probably gonna do it with like the residual of it. Okay, it didn't. But it would like shoot halfway across my bathroom every time I closed this. I just, this packaging, I can't get over it. I liked the serum, but I can't get over this packaging. <laughs> And that sucks because there's a lot of other products from the Inky List that look really exciting to me that I really want to try. But again, like they need to rebrand their image because it makes me not want to buy anything from them, which sucks because they have like, I think a salicylic acid like serum for your scalp or something that looks incredible for like any dandruff issues. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy this packaging. Also, the size on this is a fluid ounce, which is pretty standard for a lot of serums. Let's see, I have an ordinary serum right here, and I believe that it's a fluid ounce. Yeah, it's one fluid ounce, but I felt like I went through this a lot faster than any other like one fluid ounce serum that I have. I felt like I blew through this, which is crazy, and it's not the worst because this is like super cheap, but I just felt like I was using a lot, and I don't know if it's the packaging, it was really hard to control how much comes out, but I've never gone through a serum as fast as I have this one. We have another head-to-head -head competition. Again, I got this in a Look Fantastic box recently, and it's the Pixie Glow Tonic. So this is a 5% glycolic acid toner. Very, very similar to this next product, which is the Ordinary's Lactic Acid 5% and Hyaluronic Acid Serum. So one's a toner, one's a serum, but they both essentially do the same thing. They've got 5% AHAs to exfoliate your skin, leave it glowy, fresh looking, get rid of any texture you might have. Now here's the sad part. I like the idea of using AHAs as a toner, which is what I liked about this product, but the 5% glycolic acid Glycolic acid is a little bit more irritating than lactic acid, and more often than not, this stung my skin. So I have rosacea again, my skin is very sensitive. If your skin isn't sensitive, you could probably tolerate this well, and in that case, it is gonna do a really nice job of getting rid of dead skin cells, texture, and making your skin glow. For me, I just really couldn't handle this. It made my skin sting pretty much all over, except for my forehead, I have like, elephant skin on my forehead, it's like impermeable, but everywhere else, this really stung, where with the Ordinary Lactic Acid 5%, this isn't even the first bottle of this that I've bought, and I've got another one in my skincare cabinet already, because I've repurchased this so many times. For me, this does a much better job of being gentler on my skin, because it's lactic acid, so I've never really had issues with it burning my skin, except for like, if I put it over a pimple that I freshly popped, then it's gonna sting a little bit. But otherwise, for sensitive skin, I recommend this over the Pixi Glow Tonic as an alternative, because this is so much gentler. Now I've got two face moisturizers, and these were actually what I used during most of the winter time. For nighttime, I used this Pure Submerge Overnight Detox Anti-Pollution Moisturizer. And first of all, I thought this packaging was like, super cool. I've never seen anything like it. And the moisturizer itself was charcoal again, which you know I have some issues with you know I have some issues bleh, you know I have some issues with charcoal. But as far as the face moisturizer goes, I didn't really notice any problems with it except for the fact that this was like a gel texture 
and I felt like it never fully sank into my skin. It kind of left it feeling filmy and sticky to the point where I really had to make sure that I put this on a good couple of hours before I went to bed. Otherwise, my face would feel like it was sticking to the pillow all night. So I wouldn't repurchase it for that reason. I also don't feel like it did much for my skin. Obviously, it's got the anti-pollution claim, but I don't feel like it was particularly good for anti-aging, really hydrating deeply. It was just overall an okay moisturizer with like very cool UFO packaging that I've never seen before. And during the daytime, I was using this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Firming Collagen Cream. So I love First Aid Beauty and I thought I would try this cream from them. Now, it was again okay. What I liked about it is that it had a very silky texture that didn't feel like anything on the skin making it a really nice daytime moisturizer. And I would actually resort to using this at nighttime if I was washing my face right before bed and I couldn't apply this because my face would stick to the pillow. So that's when I would turn to this because again, it was a very silky texture. It doesn't feel like anything's left on the skin and I could just put my face on the pillow right away without anything like absorbing or sticking or making a mess everywhere. And again, this is a nice moisturizer. Everything from First Aid Beauty is generally well tolerated for me. It doesn't cause any issues with my skin. But do I feel like this was super firming anti-aging? Not particularly. Generally with collagen, it can't do a lot topically. You have to ingest it. So I would take the whole collagen claim with a grain of salt. It's just a really nice silky moisturizer that didn't pill, didn't feel like it was sitting on my face or anything, but I probably would not repurchase it. Up next, I have this Balance Me BHA Exfoliating Concentrate. Again, another product that I got in a Look Fantastic box. So this empties video is actually a really good update video as well on some of the bits that I got in Look Fantastic boxes. This was a really nice BHA toner, aside from the fact that it smelled like citronella. Like, it smelled like bug spray, and I kind of couldn't get over that. Also, it did that weird foamy thing just a little bit, where it kind of feels like it's sitting on the skin and foaming around. So it's not my favorite BHA toner that I've ever tried. I definitely think the Paula's Choice one is better, but I've still got some other ones to try that I'll let you guys know my thoughts on. This was really just okay. I mean, I don't know who wants a BHA toner that smells like citronella, so it's a pass for me. This is one of many samples that I've had of this product over the years, and it's the Dr. Brandt Microdermabrasion Exfoliant. This is like a physical scrub for your face, but not like St. Ives. And I think I still have like one or two sample sizes of this left. And once I'm done with them, I'm probably gonna buy the full size of this. I also have the Exfolicate scrub to try, so I'm gonna make up my mind after I try this. But so far, this is slated to be a repurchase. I love this as far as physical exfoliation goes for the face. It's super gentle, even with my rosacea. And it just has like such a nice light peppermint scent. You feel like you're getting a spa facial when you use this. I highly recommend it, even in conjunction with chemical exfoliants for your face. And it's just mwah. And now we have a battle of micellar waters. So this first one, the brand is like Otisite. I've never heard of it before, but I thought this looked so luxe because it came in a glass bottle. It was like blue tinted and it sounds amazing. It's got turmeric, holy basil. It sounds like I bought this at Whole Foods or something, but I got it in BoxyCharm. And it looked like a really nice high-end micellar water. It had salicylic acid in it, grapefruit, aloe vera juice. And then I read that I can't use this on my eyes, which is like, excuse me, what? I need micellar water for my eyes in particular. So I basically use this kind of like a salicylic acid toner, just kind of as a second cleanse all over my skin. So I don't recommend buying a micellar water that you can't use on your eyes because that's mostly what it's for is removing waterproof eye makeup. That's what it's the best at. This is why I can't fall for packaging. It's like, I don't want the ugly inky list packaging, but in really nice packaging, I want a product that makes sense. And I also used this little, oh my God, I can't say this. I used this La Roche-Posay micellar water that I got at Ulta 
That was really hard to say for some reason, and I hope I said it right. I probably didn't. The reason I bought this one is because the Rage Posay uses like thermal spring water, which is what's also in a vent. So a lot of French skincare brands do that, and it's supposed to be extra soothing for your skin. I know for me, Aven products are really, really soothing for my skin. If I'm just having like angry, red, inflamed skin, I always turn to Aven products. And so I thought that the La Roche Posay, I said it right, my cellar water would be extra soothing for my cellar water. Again, it was just okay. Like, here's the thing I think my cellar water is my cellar water. They're basically universal, except for if they add a whole bunch of ingredients that you apparently can't put in your eyes, then it's not the same. So eventually what I just did is I bought this giant Bioderma micellar water from Costco. This was like the same price as this, but it's like double the size. So for micellar water, just get what's cheap, get what's on sale. Costco even. And lastly, I have a couple of eye creams that I went through. Again, not the first sample I've gone through of this. It's the Aven, funny, I just mentioned Aven, Physiolift eye cream. So I really liked this eye cream. It's very lightweight, but this is part of the Physiolift line, which actually has retinaldehyde in it. So this is an eye cream that could potentially cause a little bit of irritation because it's got a form of retinol in it, which if you're new to using retinol, you kind of need to like ease into it and not use it every day. As far as an eye cream goes, I feel like this did a really nice job of depuffing, but I could only use it at night because of the retinol. In the future, I would like to get a full size of this to keep using it because I do feel like it does a really good job of being a gentle retinol around the eye area, which is really important because as you age, you're gonna get like crow's feet and things like that. And a nice retinol eye cream really helps with that. And finally at the end, this is the last product, I promise guys. <laughs> And it's the SVR Palpebral Cream. So another eye cream, this one I got in a look fantastic box again. So we're rounding up all the updates. It sounded really good. It was for irritated eyelids, anti-itch, soothing, has hyaluronic acid, all of the omegas, three, six, and nine. So you're covered on all fronts. I felt like this was so occlusive that it almost like started causing milia under my eyes, which is kind of like excess skin or clogged pores under your eyes. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I started getting little white bumps under my eyes that I don't normally get from eye creams. So I believe that this was just too thick and too moisturizing for my under eyes. And I was just gonna put this in empties. And then I thought of a Hiram video that I watched one day where he had a category for skincare that was for the feet. And I thought, even though it's a tiny tube of eye cream, I could use this on my legs. So once I got the rash from the Bath and Body Works cream, I used this to try to help with the rash and it did help soothe it a little bit. But unfortunately, I just needed to like apply calamine lotion on my rash. So it's good for soothing itchy, irritated skin for sure. And now that I think about it, it could make for a good hand cream as well. But as an eye cream, it really wasn't my favorite formula. That's it, I've gone through all the products now and it's about time because my voice started like cracking. So that's when you know I'm done. I really hope that all of these like little speed reviews were helpful for you guys. At least I like to think they're helpful. Let me know down below in the comments if you enjoy these types of videos. And as far as my 3,000 subscriber giveaway goes, we're right about at that number and I'm so excited. I'm gonna put a photo here of all the goodies that you can win in the giveaway instead of making a whole other video listing off all of them individually. And if you wanna enter the giveaway, the rules are super simple. Simply be subscribed to my channel, like this video, and I'm also gonna make an Instagram post for the giveaway. So like that Instagram post as well, and leave me a comment down below letting me know your Instagram username so I can contact the winner. But don't use the at symbol because apparently those are being blocked in the comments. So just write AT 
and then your Instagram username, not the at symbol. There's been a lot of issues in my last giveaway with comments getting deleted, and I'm working on a better solution, but that's the solution for now. Again, I really can't thank you guys enough for getting me to 3,000 subscribers. I mean, it's all you guys, and I just love you all so much. I wanna spoil you all, so I'm gonna do all the giveaways that I can. So definitely stay tuned for more of them. And if you're trying to figure out what video you should watch next, then I'm gonna leave a couple of mine on the screen that you can check out next. And if you haven't already, it's super simple to subscribe and join the Cam Fam. Just click on my face right here. That's all I gotta do. Ooh, I'm losing my voice. I love you all so much. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Take care, my loves.